Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Today's webinar topic is marketing strategies for virtual CPA practices. So my name is Alexa from Counting Works Pro, and we are also joined with ADP, who is hosting the webinar with us today. I'd love to quickly introduce the presenters for today. So we have Lee Reams, who is the CEO and founder of Counting Works Pro. And we also have Aaron Stark, who is the DVP of Channel Strategy at ADP. And these two will be your hosts for today and walk you through today's topic. For CPE credit with CPA Academy, you will earn one hour of CPE credit for this webinar, but you must have registered for the webinar via cpaacademy.org. Your CPE will be processed by CPA Academy later in the day and you must participate and be on the webinar for the entire webinar, so for the full 50 minutes. And you must answer the polling questions throughout the webinar as well. Your CPE credit will be applied to your account on cpaacademy.org, and any questions about CPE, please reach out to CPA Academy. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Lee Reams to get started on this webinar. All right, well, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, as I think most of our participants were probably in our home offices. Um, Aaron and I are in different states and you know we'll deal, as we said, Aaron has his children upstairs. We might have FedEx deliveries. We might have things that we don't normally uh, face during our office kind of headquarters experience. But um, the good news is we do have this technology and we're able to uh, share some of the knowledge and information that we've gathered through our own client base. Um, and obviously ADP's experiences with a large uh, set of CPAs and accounting firms as well. Um, so we're going to kind of go back and forth with Aaron and I. We're going to share some different ideas, talk a little bit about uh, COVID-19 and what's accelerated the digital buying uh, patterns. Uh, we will get into what this new buying process looks like. Um, we will also share ways to be part of the referral conversation. And then most importantly, uh, a way to develop a strategy uh, for successfully becoming a high growth practice. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the intro, and I have some notes that are kind of written around, um, but the, the basics is, you know, uh, my feelings are that behaviors have changed and I think they are permanently changed because of COVID-19. Uh, certain elements um, ha are good. So certain things that are disrupting the way we do business as tax and accounting professionals um, actually it turned out to be a, a positive. And what I mean by that, there's trends now where, you know, things that would have taken years and years and years to transform are transforming today. The idea of having a contactless uh, interview with you and your clients, right? So uh, Zoom meetings, uh, CounterWorks Pro has teleaccountant, all this different technology that enables you to basically meet face-to-face -face in a pseudo interview process and still engage, still, uh, you know, see your clients in person, quote unquote, without the added risk of, uh, you know, obviously the, the issues with COVID. Um, so what we think is uh, a lot of this disruption is going to change. So the contactless appointments, um, the importance of having an online presence being found when people are looking for you or more importantly, the solution that you provide, um, you know, so how can your practice develop a strategy for success and growth in this COVID-19 uh, challenging time. So today we're gonna to talk about these uh, actionable items and not only surviving, but we're seeing many clients thriving. So there's two different uh, pools of people right now. I have clients who are um, actually busier than ever. Basically, you know, coming through the July 15th um, uh, extended second tax season, uh, busier than ever, trying to get through as many clients as they can. Others are, are struggling. Others have had lost clients to DIY for tax preparation. Others have businesses that are struggling uh, immensely. So a lot of what we're gonna talk about is, okay, how can you combat that and still be found, still gather new clients, you know, supplement the, the referral pipeline that might be slowing down. So let's get into it. Uh, this section is the COVID-19 and contactless referrals. Um, so the first uh, slide that I'm using is kind of the then versus now. And, you know, even five, six months ago, uh, you know, our office closed March 7th, a little bit ahead of where here in California, we closed down because of the, the government uh, side. But basically you went to conferences still, you had chamber meetings, you had meetups, you might've had dinner meetings, you might've had clients obviously in your office. Um, today, you know, what's happening, right? So, um, 
you know, back in the old days, consumers were able to make a lot of choices within a vacuum. So there wasn't as much transparency and influence brought on by the web. Today, people are, at, you know, on Nextdoor, they're on uh, marketplace sites like TaxBuzz, uh, GMB, uh, Facebook, Instagram. There's all these conversations that are occurring about you or the problems that you're solving that um, you may not be engaging in. So uh, definitely a, a big difference in kind of the way things are done. Um, and more importantly, taxpayers and business owners are becoming more accustomed to interacting with brands online, right? So an outdated website right now or a lack of a digital presence means you're out of business. So those that have neglected and said, hey, I have a really strong um, client base. I have people that are returning all the time. I have referrals coming through. You know, people now are changing the way they choose whom to work with. So do they feel valued? Are you responsive to them? Are you sending out client newsletters to them? Are you engaging your current clients? Um, there was a, a, a big survey that was done by one of the uh, at a big trade, and it was about the number one issue of facing CPA firms, accounting firms, and it was client attrition. So what are the things that I can do to kind of keep my client attrition as small as possible? And part of that is going to be how you adapt to the digital age. So you know, what is the client experience? The user experience is something that you never really thought of. It's, um, it's a differentiator now. It's not just that you're an expert at something. You may know everything inside and out, but if clients, when they're looking for a new firm, if, they're not, if you're not being found, when they actually decide to engage with you, if they don't like that experience, if it's not uh, streamlined and using digital technology, um, there's other competitors now that are, and you're gonna have a hard time competing. So that's kind of the beginning of this, and let's get into uh, a little bit about, you know, most people, we say contactless referrals, what does that mean? Well, what it really means is there are ways to utilize your current client base to do a lot of the talking for you. So you may not have the situation where, you know, you have two peers or they're at a family gathering and someone asks their uncle, you know, Joe, hey, who do you use with your small business accounting? That experience might not happen the way it used to happen, but harnessing the power of the voice of your clients through reviews, testimonials, case studies. These are ways to use digital technologies, Zoom meetings, whatever, um, to create this still contactless referrals. And I know ADP and Aaron, you had a, a lot of insight here on kind of how this has changed. You guys were a big sales focus industry or uh, business, and now you've had to adapt to this as well. So kind of, I, I know you have some insight here to add. Yeah, thanks, Lee. I'm, it's, it's interesting, you know, heading into this current environment, our small business services group, which is what I'm a part of and heading our channel strategy, you know, we bring on hundreds of thousands of new clients annually and over 90% of our business came in through referrals. So, A, when this topic and when the subject was surfaced and for us to be a part of it, clearly it kind of struck a nerve. Um, because this is something that's top of mind for us. And listen, whether or not you're a Fortune 200 company with 50,000 employees, 2,000 salespeople like we have here at ADP, or you know, you're a small firm or medium-sized firm, like this is affecting everybody in different ways. Uh, so hopefully what we could share on this is just some of the experiences that we've had thus far. Uh, we definitely haven't figured out everything just yet, but we have a couple of best practices. And when it came to the disruption of referrals and, and this new um, arena that we're kind of work through in the contactless environment, uh, it was funny, I had a conversation with uh, one of our divisional vice presidents that covers our Florida market. And we were just talking about the shift that we've seen into some of the more unorthodox channels or, or different mediums to get referrals. And he used the quote from a favorite movie of probably many in Jurassic Park, where nature finds a way. And for those that are looking and those that are trying to still, you know, increase their productivity, like you will find a way to, you know, continue to be productive and get those referrals. But I think the number one um, best practice that we've seen thus far, honestly, and it might sound super simple and remedial, is that we have to be asking. And we have to be asking, though, in different in, in different mediums. So whether or not you're asking in person, like you were talking about before, Lee, in our current client base, uh, or you're asking through social media, or you're asking in email communications to your existing client base, or you know, instituting new kind of go-to-market strategies through marketing, you just have to be asking all the time because you're, that, that's the way you're gonna fish in today's environment. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, these conversations are occurring right now, whether you're involved in them or not. So if you're kind of head in the sand, not moving towards the digital age, not having a social presence, not engaging your prospects and clients online, uh, you're basically just sitting, you know, sitting on the bench. You're, you're outside of that conversation. Um, cool. So let's get into a little bit on the basics. This uh, 
slide number eight, how to get found online. This is kind of, if it, you know, a lot of people get these SEO phishing emails and, you know, I, I'm, I'm a search engine optimization and I, I will be able to, you, you have these issues with your website and I'll be able to put you on page one. And, you know, a lot of times these emails come from a Google email address and, you know, some, who knows who they are, but at times, believe it or not, tax and accounting professionals will say, whoa, what is this? You know, what do I need to do? And perhaps it's just not understanding the full basics of SEO, but I'm gonna, I broke it down here. So this is really basic SEO, one, SEO 101. So in order to build a digital, comprehensive digital presence, you need all of the following. You can't just do one and expect to be found online. Google creates their algorithm for a reason. And these are some of the, the uh, variables that they use as signals to decide what brand they wanna show. So Google's job is to show uh, to their searchers the most relevant, trustworthy brand possible. So how does Google define that? They're gonna say, well, do they have a, a, a responsive, mobile-friendly, authoritative website? Um, are they using ADA compliance? That's something that uh, a lot of, you know, can the fonts get bigger? Uh, people um, be able to navigate the website easier. There's a lot of legal uh, exposure now to that. So if your site is not ADA compliance, it's something you might like me to look at. I still see 50% of the accounting industry's sites are still not SSL secure. They don't have um, basic protection on top of their website. So that's position one. First thing you want to look at is, you know, work on your website. These are the elements you want to look at. Um, the second biggest thing is the positive recent reviews across various platforms. So marketplace sites like GMB, uh, people hate Yelp, but Yelp has some good traffic, Thumbtack, Facebook, we have taxbuzz.com, we have countyworks.com. We have a full um, uh, platform that's designed to help tax and accounting firms attract as many five-star reviews as possible. We even, uh, when we, we get the reviews for our clients, we even post them on their social media sites. And what this does is this is starting the process of using social proof to promote your firm. You're letting others do the talking for you. And this is kind of how, when we say this contact less referral, well, the reality is these clients are referring other people to you. They're doing it not in a one-to-one -one basis. They're doing this on scale. And I think when we get into the funnel side here in a little bit, um, that's really important to understand. I'm no longer just growing by, you know, a few clients per month or 10 or 20 if you have a bigger firm or whatever. Maybe you have a lot of referrals coming. But if you follow this process, you can get uh, lead funnels that actually allow you to bring in hundreds of people per month. Um, the 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 easy ones, relevant information, blog content. A lot of times we see people start blogs, they put three blog posts up and then they never post again. Awful, right? So Google looks for, you know, how often is this, is this business engaging with their customer? Um, their Google My Business listing, if one thing you uh, leave from this presentation, make sure that you have optimized your GMB listing. Google has a new um, service related ad program uh, designed where they're doing background screenings, things that we've done in our marketplace sites. And they're going to start promoting kind of service professionals in the local area. The, your Google My Business is going to be one of your biggest uh, lead generators. And I'm going to talk about zero click searches later on in this presentation and understanding it's not just your website. People are finding you all over the place. Um, so it, you need to be optimized everywhere. Active social media profiles, directory and citation optimization. This means that all of the directories have the same information about your firm across the internet. So name, address, phone number. Uh, inbound links, video content, more. So these are all the basics for SEO um, and getting found. And ooh, we're already 15 minutes in and first poll question. Uh, so I'll go ahead. I know we want to give everyone plenty of time to answer these. So poll question number one, which of these is not an essential step to building out a comprehensive digital presence? Uh, so we have positive reviews, optimized GMB listing, uh, pay-per-click, PPC advertising, and video content. So we'll go ahead and give you some time for that. And go ahead and close when you think it's time. Yeah, we'll try to give it up to a minute here. People are still okay. voting. All right.
just to limit the amount of uh, awkward silence that we have going on, Lee, as people are filling out the, the poll, it's interesting when we see and, and thinking about how we optimize our digital presence, and we're we'll talking about it throughout the, the course of the presentation, but finding other partners that are in similar client purchase paths and being able to weave you know, yourself into those same digital ecosystems is another best practice. So if you have you know, partners that you're working with, whether it's an accountant working with a broker, a broker with it, working with an attorney, et cetera, et cetera, and they have different websites and they can start to be a little bit more prominent and help each other out on their own respective websites, you know, those are different ways to capture the audience as well. Yeah, that's perfect. That leads into kind of being a part of the conversation. Um, it, it's not necessarily, it could be a group on LinkedIn or Facebook. It might be a related party, like a, um, you know, an industry type thing where you're just participating, sharing knowledge, but you're building up your, your reputation. Uh, and at some point it takes time, but you would be kind of the go-to professional there. So uh, excellent uh, input as well. And we can end the poll now. And remember, it does not matter if your answer is correct or not for CPE, just that you answer something. All right, perfect. Let's get into this then. Um, oh, here's the results real quick. Uh, there we go. We, we, the majority went for the pay-per-click advertising, 83%. So uh, I think we're ready to move on to the next slide. Okay, so how the consumer buying process has changed. So we borrowed this uh, track maven and created this funnel. We have created a blog article about the same process that is a little bit different, but I think the main thing you need to realize is uh, today a majority of the buyer's journey is now completed digitally, right? So in the old days, you know, if a firm like ADP has a, a lot of uh, uh, sales reps are actually going and seeing clients, communicating with clients. And today as things have changed, um, more things are led from the content side on the marketing side where the actual close or your interaction with the client um, is, is really that final step. So we have awareness, interest, consideration, intent, evaluation, and purchase. As you can see, the funnel starts wide and gets lower and lower as you start qualifying who you're gonna be speaking with as you go through it. Um, so let's get into the awareness side. Um, so during the awareness stage, buyers basically are identifying their challenge or an opportunity they want to pursue, right? Um, think of the awareness stage of the customer journey as your first impression with your client. So there's two things here. Um, awareness is not necessarily that your client is aware they want to hire somebody. Awareness is not necessarily awareness about your specific brand. Awareness is more, hey, you know what, I'm having issues with the, my income statements or I'm having issues, you know, I'm not positive how to fill out the PPP uh, uh, loan side and I want to kind of do some research on this. And what it is, is there's content that's written or developed for the awareness stage. So when people are searching that they have a problem and they're looking for information about that versus um, I want to hire a CPA that works with expats. That is in the intent stage. So the content you're developing um, from the intent stage versus the awareness stage is different. And how you communicate and what you're doing. So the goal here is you want to create content. And this is, when I say content, this could be blog content, social media posts, this could be video content. But basically you want to create content that speaks to every level of this funnel because you want your brand not to be you know, this is the, the typical thing. Well, I just want one call closes. And that's not the way the modern world works anymore. Um, Google had a, a study out. It says 10 encounters before someone will actually decide to um, uh, hire you. And seven or eight of those encounters happened with you not even knowing that they were doing them. So those encounters are encounters with your brand online, reading your blog articles, perhaps seeing some Q&A, an article where you were interviewed and, and made some commentary. And I know ADP has a lot to say, kind of how you guys have shifted a little bit on the awareness side as well. Yeah, so you know, going back to my previous statement, Lee, when you know, 90 plus percent of our business comes into referrals, you know, we concentrated those efforts and a lot of our associates were out in the, you know, out in the streets, you know, getting in front of our accountants, our bankers, our brokers. I mean, there's a myriad of different uh, channels that we were navigating through in order to generate that business. And now that all of a sudden our presence is not as prominent, and it's definitely not in a physical environment, you know, trying to figure out how we can tap into the multitude of mediums in a digital environment and just making sure like before it was potentially 
you know, four or five um, different, you know, call it funnels or, or avenues that we can go down to then create, you know, hundreds of thousands of leads. Now we need hundreds of different avenues to go down to hopefully create close to that same number. We're probably not going to get there. Uh, the one thing we'll talk about it as we go through the presentation a little bit later, but some of those leads though will be a little bit more quality because as you were saying before, at this top end of the funnel, what we recognize is that we want to cast a wide enough net to capture enough attention. And then as we work them down the funnel, we're going to find out between either the client finding out on their own or us vetting out those particular opportunities, whether or not we're a good fit for one another. Um, where we'll start to see as we get a little bit more specific into their needs and an understanding where we could benefit the client that we may say no to somebody or they may say no to us, but we want to be able to at least have the at bat. And that's where the awareness is coming in. So making sure that we have a strong social presence. We've definitely increased our, our awareness there, which we weren't as strong in all the different mediums, whether it's Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, which is potentially one that you know doesn't necessarily feel comfortable in our demographic that we usually go after, but we don't want to discount anything. And I think that's the best practice that we could share with everybody is that once you have that core, call it elevator pitch in the digital arena built, you know, get it out to as many different top end of the funnel areas that you can capture their attention and then work them through the funnel from there. Right. And then one of the best parts of what you just said is this is where people are spending their time. They're, you know, they're spending their time on social media. They're not necessarily on news sites anymore. You know, Instagram would be a perfect example. It's not built specifically for our messaging, you wouldn't think, but uh, we have effectively figured out ways to use it as well. So um, you know, again, just because people aren't at work, they're still playing around and then seeing something that they searched on, you know, during the, in the office and then having a retarget ad on Instagram really kind of reinforces your message. So uh, very valid point there. So let's go as we go through this down to interest. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory, but uh, I think one of the stats that people forget, and this is the, the Google stat I was talking about, 88% of consumers research before they make a purchase decision, uh, consulting on average of over 10 pieces of content um, or outside sources. So this is why it's so important to establish a digital presence, to be a thought leader, to be an authority, to make sure that your brand is now, um, has a presence when they're at this interest stage. So, um, you know, a lot of people think they can solve everything online and, you know, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna do all the research, but what's nice about your content, if it's done correctly, it actually will educate them to the point where they understand, you know what, I need help to do this. And that's the way properly written and developed content, whether again, that's videos, um, uh, social posts or articles, that's kind of what it does. Um, so, you know, much of this process, I've said this before, and this will be a theme of this, is happening about your brand right now and you don't even know about it. So people that, firms that do not have a strong digital presence, um, literally you're just not in the game and you're wondering well, why are the phones not ringing? Well, you're, you might only have a website. You don't have reviews. You don't have social proof. There's all these elements that need to work together. And that's what starts creating not this small referral one by one, but this machine that we're kind of talking about here. How can I generate a sales funnel that I bring in leads that go to discovery calls? That is the whole goal. Our entire platform at County Works Pro is designed to push people uh, from a prospect to that discovery call. And at that point, you can determine from both parties, is this someone I want to work with or not? Um, is there advice I can have? Do I need to refer this person out to someone else, et cetera? So that's kind of the way it works. Um, when it comes to consideration, um, this is where people are starting to, um, you know, this is where there's a disconnect. And, and it's more that most tax and accounting pros are not marketing experts, but everyone expects a one call close. And, you know, I'm sure Aaron's team and, and ADP would love that as well. And it happens. The good news is if your content is, is, is doing its job, when it, it comes to this, the, the, the closes, um, you'd be surprised how business development is no longer chasing um, uh, the sales side because they're, that already has been done by the marketing. And that's how that funnel has changed. Marketing now is doing all the heavy lifting for you. So by the time someone is actually contacting you, um, they're already, you know, they already know your brand is kind of what my point is. So what are the most important things that they're looking at? So online reviews, testimonials, case studies, uh, references, social proof. So for, social proof is, do they have a Twitter feed? Do they have a, a Facebook? How many followers do they have? Are they engaging? Um, are people saying nice things about them? That's where social proof um, starts to play in. So 
uh, your biggest selling points are the positive lasting impressions you left on other clients, right? During, you know, your engagements uh, and the results they gained from working with you. So they're going to be your best disciples. They're going to go out there and, and spread the word better than you ever can. So what does that entail? That's that really is talking about content marketing, sharing relative articles. Um, there's nurture campaigns, uh, things that uh, a lot of accountants don't do. They don't make it conversational. So it's more, they talk high level as if they're talking to other accountants. They actually overestimate the, the knowledge and the skill sets of their customers at times. They, they think some things that are so basic should be understood by them and they're actually talking over their head. So this is an important part during the consideration phase. Um, so as we go through this, what are some of these social proof uh, items that we're talking about during consideration? Um, so this could be other businesses in their same niche whose logos, you know, it's, it, you know we work with these companies. That's a third party uh, endorsement, basically. Um, you know, if you are interviewed uh, in, a, in a media article, if you're guest posting on another article, um, that is also valuable for your brand. You know, making client testimonials and reviews part of your big push, that should be part of your marketing plan. Um, professional software credentials. So uh, we, did, we have badges. Now GMB is gonna have their background screen. So trust is obviously a big issue. Software credentials mean you've gone through certain education. Um, there's also obviously lo lots of funnels that go through uh, the QuickBooks and Zeros, all these uh, different directories. So those are really important. Uh, earn media is articles, interviews, citations. Uh, we recommend uh, signing up for help a reporter out. It's, a, it's called HARO. It's a, a way that you can uh, pitch yourself to media who's looking for questions about different articles that they're writing. Uh, but this goes back into the social media account social media shares, uh, obviously recommendations of friends. And this is the group think. It's like high school again. What does everyone else think before I make a decision? If this person is perceived to be the number one expat tax pro or the number one um, you know, uh, entertainment uh, CPA, those are the group think. That's the way, it's the easiest way to use social proof to help yourself grow, uh, which leads us into the intent side. So one of the things I say when, when we say intent, we're talking about, okay, someone is now ready to buy. So one of the things we see is, do you make it difficult for that process to occur? Um, you know, you don't like showing your pricing. Oh, I, I'm not a commodity. I don't wanna um, uh, have a way for someone to sign up through my website, for example. If you're doing packaging, selling, um, let's say a virtual CFO product, um, what you're doing is creating friction and buyers today they're used to the Amazon experience, right? So when you start creating more friction or make it harder to talk to, in some respects, you're push, pushing your prospects away. You're making it hard for them to, to come in. So we, we put a couple of things here, value pricing. Uh, we've written some articles about this on Counting Works Pro. Um, I think it's well worth looking at in, if, you're, if you're trying to understand how to use, how to sell your services, how to differentiate yourself. Value pricing is a big deal. Uh, conversion tools, uh, that could be a chat bot on your website. How can I engage uh, maybe some calculators or ways that I can white paper downloads, things that I can use on my website or uh, my social sites to get people to ask for information from me. Uh, responsiveness is probably the number one issue. Um, you know, if you're too busy for your clients at the, before they become clients, how are you going to effectively deal with them when they are clients, right? Uh, this is a big part of how people trust you. So how responsive you are um, is, is a big deal. Nurture campaigns. This is some higher level marketing. So, you know, if only one in 10 clients come in at, at the intent level, so meaning 90% of the, the audience that you're talking to is not ready to purchase from you, what are you going to do with those people? So you're just going to talk to them once. If you don't close, you know, that's it. So at minimum, you put them on your new client newsletter. Um, but we have developed a, a series of, what I'll call nurture campaigns. And these are just different ways to stay in contact, keep your brand out there, uh, but also kind of validate the value that providing. So, you know, maybe you share some case studies that we, how some of the results I've done for other clients, right? Um, we like to automate it. Uh, the last thing you want to be doing is having a full staff doing this, but uh, nurture campaigns is definitely something you need to understand and, and how to uh, follow up with leads. I'm sure ADP has the most sophisticated nurture campaigns going. So they, they get that one, but that's important and then easy onboarding. So if someone is ready to become a client, is your engagement letter in eSign, you know, do you have forms and things that can feed uh, through the internet to get people online? Um, you know, are you using remote technology? Obviously most people are, VoIP calling. 
These are things that make it easy for your clients at the intent stage to engage with you. So that's kind of the, the main parts uh, of this side. I think the next one, evaluation. Yeah, Aaron, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, just real quick, if you wouldn't mind uh, scrolling back one, one quick slide on that point that you talked about in regards to ADP, having a sophisticated CRM and nurture campaign where we can start to compartmentalize our clients and our prospects. I mean, we, there are opportunities even for some of you know small organizations, some startups. I saw a question that was posted before uh, where you can start to take advantage of some more entry level CRM systems. So that way, as you're starting to capture, whether it's existing clients, if you're a more mature uh, organization or if you're a startup and you're starting to get some prospects into the top end of the funnel, one of the important things is going on the offense, right? And being able to have very targeted and specific uh, information that you're providing in these nurture campaigns. If you're doing that spray and pray methodology where everybody's receiving the same type of content, the same type of information, that's not necessarily relevant to their industry, their profession, you know, the, the level or stage that they, those particular prospects are at in their buying cycle, you may miss the mark. And one of the things that we're seeing is that it's a opportunity for all of us to be just a little bit more thoughtful of the information that we're providing. And I saw we're one of the entry level CRM. So ADP actually partnered up with a company called Upnetic. Uh, it's taken me a couple of times to get used to the name, but it's definitely unique. It's Upnetic. And um, what they do is they help organizations inventory their prospects, their clients, so that way it becomes more efficient to push information out uh, to, to really either you know, expand your share of wallet or increase your market share. Um, so again, it's just thinking about different ways to stay top of mind during these nurture events because I couldn't agree with you more. You know, it's not a one call close anymore. It's how do you continue to you know, feed them throughout the funnel from start to finish. Yeah, and so what we do with our CountyWorks Pro CRM and our nurture campaigns is we segment them based on the type of client they are. So what kind of information did they, you know, what funnel did they come in from? IRS tax problems, get nurture campaigns all about tax problems, uh, virtual CFOs, et cetera. So targeting the messaging, I think is key, um, which leads us to the evaluation stage. So intent, I'm now ready to purchase. So you know, are they just making this decision based on one referral or are they out there shopping and looking and comparing multiple CPAs and accounting firms enrolled agents to uh, each other? Um, during the evaluation stage, basically prospects are making that final decision whether or not your business is the best choice for them, right? Um, so we talked about, you know, make it easy to contact you. Uh, we're pushing discovery calls. We're pushing um, our teleaccountant technology. So we're trying to bring people to come through funnels directly to a calendar or even, you know, directly to a virtual meeting. And this is where you can spend that 15 to 30 minutes. You know, if you're doing 10 of those a week, you know, three or four of them are probably pretty good prospects. And the amount of time you spend that way versus chasing the leads, you know, where someone calls you or emails you and then you're back and forth, back and forth. Let's get you straight to that video conference meeting. Let's, let's get it so they're still chasing other vendors who don't have this technology or not using it, but your business model should now in, in include that. So you want to get your face in front of your prospect um, to be able to, again, decide, is this a good firm that are, you know, is this a good match for me? Do I want to work with this person? Do they want to work with me? Um, using that type of technology, I think is important. So that's what I, I keep saying, take the friction out of the buying process. So streamline, you know, your, your packages, make it easy for them to communicate with you, uh, make it easy for them to onboard. You know, those are kind of the basic things during the evaluation stage. I think if you get them to the discovery calls where you're on a video meeting like Zoom or again, teleaccountant, um, the chances of you closing a higher percentage are way up here. Um, so it's, a, it's an easy uh, fix in your current marketing plans, uh, but start thinking about it. How can we now start using a lot of these different funnels um, to, to bring people to this stage where it's time for the purchase. Um, the purchase stage, I had written a few notes, but, uh, and I'm just going to read them from an offline uh, deal. What I consider the top three things that you, you want to do, and Aaron has a bunch of information here. They're, they're into closing and, and understand the process. But um, so number one, be confident when discussing the value you provide. One of the things I see all the time is if you don't believe in what you're selling, the, the person you're selling to won't believe in it either. Um, so be ready with examples. If people are, you know, want a little more case studies. I worked with Joe, who's in this industry, just like you, and we helped them save $50,000, right? So if I could do that for you, what would you be willing to, sp to spend with us? You know, what would that value be for you? 
um, those are kind of examples that you need to start. And uh, we've done uh, content on this as well as, as how to sell. And again, go to the County Works Pro blog and you'll, you'll be able to search on that. But that's number one. Uh, number two, feel free to make um, new referrals to other pros if you don't match the need. And you'd be surprised how many times doing that actually creates that person as a referral source for you. You are trustworthy enough to say, hey, this may not be the right you know, fit for you, but I have so-and-so. So A, you're giving the other business referral. So hopefully they'll reciprocate for you. Um, B, you're helping meet the needs of this prospect. So they're not just you know, leaving in a bad way. We see negative reviews all the time when someone does, I can't help you, you're wasting my time kind of thing. And they go and put a one-star review on you. Um, but more importantly, the ability to walk away from a sale um, actually creates the buyer's intention that they actually want to do business with you more than they did before. And it's kind of a little of psychology side of here, uh, but that's number two on the purchase side. Number three, uh, remove uncertainty for the prospect. Um, so your prospect will be comparing the value you provide to the risk you are requesting and choosing to work with you, right? So how can I minimize that risk while building trust in that purchase phase? Um, I'll let Aaron, the, the closer, kind of talks through a, a few more hit things here. Yeah, no, listen, I, I would echo the majority of what you said. The one piece that I would complement it with is in this environment, you need to be super confident about the strengths that, and the, the differentiation in your services versus what your potential buyer can find, you know, in this, you know, open ecosystem. Because if it's price driven, then they, trust me, they'll go out and find a better price. That's not hard to do online nowadays. But for, you know, and I see it listed here as far as all the different uh, communications that you have is over emphasis on what is valuable to that client and what differentiates you. If you can really hone in on those two things and making sure that you are confident that you're providing the utmost value and that you're solving a, a particular need and you continue to communicate, you know, how you're going to do that and you emphasize the differentiation in your products versus what your general competition provides, then you're going to be able to secure a lot more deals along the way because if those two things are, are somewhat um, on parallel with your competition, then price becomes a great equalizer. And if you're not in a position to you know, continue to lower your price and, and decrease your margins, it, it's going to lower your chances of closing the deal at the end of the day. Perfect. And um, one thing to think about is when the prospect is done, ready for the purchase side, um, they've done all this research about you, but guess what? Do a little research about them before you talk to them. Uh, Google their name, look up their company, understand what they do. It speaks immediately you're starting the relationship off to the front, uh, on a better uh, standing and it's something a lot of people do not do. So as rolls us into question two, we're running, we're late a little bit, so we're gonna have to speed it up. So during what's, which stage of the marketing funnel do leads turn into prospects? Uh, awareness, consideration, interest or purchase. So we'll have about a minute uh, to get that handled. And Aaron, as again, we don't like the dead time. You can, you can speak however you like right now. <laughs> yeah, listen, I think this is just a, an interesting time for everybody to think about the creative ways to engage their audience, no matter what part of that buying cycle that they're in, uh, the marketing cycle that they're trying to produce in order to, you know, create referrals for their business. Uh, I think today it's, you know, the creative ones are the ones that just stand out and it doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, the most formal cre uh, levels of creativity where you have an entire marketing department, but, uh, and I think we talk about it later, but just simple things like thank yous and following up on certain important dates throughout the, the that journey um, is important. I'll, I'll just share one example as far as like a unique experience. And many of us probably don't buy Eddie Bauer anymore, but uh, about a year or so ago, they released this thing called the Icebox. And it enabled people, right, it kind of captured their attention to come in and try on their outerwear in a, literally in a box that made it really cold. And in this virtual environment, like people want to do things a little bit differently and that just drove traffic to them. Um, so again, I'm not asking people to create ice boxes for themselves, but you know, anything that's going to create a unique experience is what people are looking for today. Oh, that'd be a geographic version. Yeah. We'd have, <laughs> we'd have a sunbox out here. Very good. So I think we're good with poll two. And there are our, our responses. So let's move on. We have uh, a few slides to get through in the next 10 minutes or so. So, you need to be part of the conversation. So 
um, you know, the question is where are referrals are taking place. So we've kind of highlighted a lot of this. So these are simpler bullet points. Uh, social media is happening every day. Multiple conversations are happening every day. Um, some firms are starting to use uh, kind of social media listening software. So that will basically, you put in your keywords and kind of say, okay, if people are speaking about this, I want to be alerted and I want to be able to jump into that, uh, that conversation. Uh, that's one way to go, but understand that this stuff is going on right now. So if your brand is not ever present on social media, if you're not easy to refer on social media, um, your brand could be losing out. And the example would be uh, on Facebook, I work with Lee Reams and Associates. If I type in Lee Reams and Associates and I have a Facebook page, Facebook would basically pre-populate a link and kind of bring them to my Facebook page. If you don't have a Facebook page, then it's the traditional, here's their phone number, call them, go to, you know, you're not, it's not as quickly uh, a nice, efficient handoff is what I'm getting at. Uh, meetings and events, we know they're coming back. They're doing them online, obviously. Referrals from other professionals, these are no brainers. Um, case studies and testimonials and reviews, these are referrals because your, your uh, audience, uh, again, is doing the selling for you. So uh, those are important things. And then referral tools, there's referral software. We have a couple of referral tools built into CountyWorks Pro, but these are the places that referrals are taking place. Um, I don't know, Aaron, if you had something to do, I see a note here that you had something to add in this one. No, I think that you you kind of nailed it. Uh, I know for time purposes, why don't we keep it going uh, okay. so we can get to some of the more juicier stuff at the end. Perfect, you got it. Um, so is your brand uh, ranking well in search? So, you know, we start obviously with the website. Um, are you on page one for the keywords you care about? There's two different types of search. It's branded and non-branded search. Branded search is what do people see when they are Googling your name or your firm name? So at that point, you want all the, your review sites to be coming up. You want multiple review sites with lots of fresh reviews, um, lots of good reviews. Uh, you'll see Google My Business. You'll see Tax Buzz, Counting Works, these other marketplace sites, hopefully below your website. Uh, non-branded is um, expat tax preparation. That is a non-branded search term. You know, where is your brand ranking there? So you got the website, you got marketplaces and review sites, uh, obviously social media, Google My Business, which is the huge one. We'll get in a little more detail here. Um, you know, articles and content people are talking about. Specialties and niches, we're gonna cover this a little bit more. It's become more important than ever. And in some respects, it's good and bad with the COVID uh, pandemic where restaurants and certain types of niches are really suffering. Others are obviously booming. Um, so that's something that you need to strategically think about. Uh, and then of course, obviously, uh, the power word uh, of mouth referrals, right? Um, so. Uh, when it comes to the actual websites, 93% uh, of web traffic begins with search engines. So you're going to want to optimize your website um, and your other channels on Google. So that accounts for 76% of desktop and 86% of mobile search traffic, right? So even if you have a, a beautiful website, there's no guarantee that clients are going to navigate to your page if you're not ranking well. So, and once they're there, what are the points that you're using to communicate your value, you're answering the questions that they may have, um, you're showing social proof with reviews and things like that. Um, that those are key elements So make sure that you have those built into your site. Um, I don't know, Aaron, for time, do you want to jump in here still or no? No, I, I think the, the tools that we leverage through your organization and County Works and being able to stand up websites, I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that so many organizations today still do not have this and in this environment, it's hard to imagine how you're going to be productive without it. So leveraging the tools and counting works and being able to stand up websites on a quick, you know, quickly, efficiently, and those that look as, as professional as what you were able to provide, not to give you a plug here, but it has been instrumental to a lot of the firms that we serve today uh, to do it in such a complimentary form that your organization provides. So, um, you know, I think it's uber important and, and amplified in this environment. And it's the, the one thing I want to add here is um, this, concept of zero click search and the quality of your website, the, the, the snippets that you're using in content, the way your site is structured, the way you optimize your entire digital presence means people are making these non-branded or branded searches. They may not even be going to your website. They may find something that Google brought from another third party in the search results that we call them search results. And they basically could be contacting you or, or making decisions based on those they're not even taking traffic to you. And um, it, this is a huge percentage, 
of mobile searches are zero click, 34% uh, of desktop. And this is something when you're looking at your digital strategy, it's something you definitely need to understand uh, and, and work on. Uh, so now I want to get into uh, a couple different elements of, of establishing the digital presence. The marketplace sites and review sites are the, the you know, so some people hate them, but the reality is consumers trust and read reviews of local businesses. Uh, according to some studies, 90% of consumers read reviews of local businesses. 76% of all people trust online reviews as much as recommendations from family and friends. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into more detail here on this one, but the long and short of it is reviews matter. They should be the life bread of your practice and building it. It should be a part of every contact you have with clients. Any successful engagement, send out a review request, even verbally say, hey, my business is built on referrals and reviews. Would you share your experience, um, you know, on one of these sites? It's important to be on a third party site, not necessarily just on your website. People like to control the environment. The reality is there's more credibility in a third party website than there is you know, people kind of stuffing their own um, testimonials. Uh, as far as social media goes, um, you know, especially now with COVID-19, people are spending more and more time on social media, um, not having a presence again. You know, if, I think this is old now, seven in 10 in, uh, in Americans use social media. But basically, if your prospects are spending time on these platforms, um, then make sure your practice looks good there optimize it. We have a, a service where we optimize the Google My Business listings. We actually do um, blog posting, due date reminders, all kinds of posting to the GMB accounts. This keeps them fresh in Google's mind. Um, I'm actually going to run into Google here now. And, um, and I have some examples here with Karen Drescher's site where, you know, we were pushing out COVID-related PPP-related uh, CARES Act content. Um, you know, th these type of profiles, these type of Google My Business profiles, drive a huge amount of traffic. And those that are not optimizing that, Google, obviously they're in to make money. Um, they're pushing people to their products. So I said this earlier, make sure your GMB is um, active. Make sure you're posting content to it. Make sure you have a ton of reviews, add pictures of your staff, add pictures of your building. Um, that means to Google that you probably are relevant. The more active you are, that's another signal to them. Um, this is a very important element of a digital marketing strategy. Articles and content. So um, creating relevant content, um, I think is key, especially if you're going for a specialty or niche, you want to be that topical authority online. So if it, and it's easier to be a specialty or niche uh, person versus a generalist. A lot of times, you know, most of our clients come in as generalists and we have to really pitch to them why it's important to establish a niche or specialty. We're gonna go into that in the examples here in a little bit, but uh, you need to be producing content, either having it done for you through ghost written content, like we do at Counting Works Pro, or um, making it part of your staff, where each person is gonna establish uh, an ongoing, timely uh, articles. Longer articles get indexed better, um, and these are what is considered evergreen content. So evergreen content are things that once you get them indexed well, they bring traffic to you long after you've published them. So they continue to drive uh, new leads uh, to your business. So specialties and niches. I think this is one of the most important takeaways. If you are not um, specializing right now, you probably should. Um, and there's two different ways to do it. And one, a specialty versus a niche. A niche is, you know, auto dealers or lawyers. A specialty can be a part of a service. So, you know, the AD payroll and HR services, that could be a specialty that you're offering. Um, you could just target a specialty type of business. So SaaS businesses, uh, a specialty is crypto, uh, crypto stuff, right? These are different things that you can do to that you can carve out an area that is much easier to compete in the digital world in a smaller space. One, you're more relevant, you're gonna get ranked better. Two, you're gonna be perceived as the expert in this area. Um, which is going to make your actual purchase decision much easier. You know, with anyone who has an established niche, we have one that, uh, that focuses on police law enforcement. Uh, uh, they have, I think, near 10,000 clients. The, you know, one, it's easier to do your job because you, you've seen every different scenario that's possible. But more importantly, they all talk. They talk at work. They talk offline. They talk socially. It makes it much easier to create this ongoing referral network. So, Definitely, uh, and hit me up on LinkedIn if you have questions about this, um, but establishing or thinking about specialties and niches in the digital world is it gonna be a key differentiator for you.
which leads us into polling question three and then coming into the close of this presentation. So you should focus on a specialty or niche rather than being a generalist. All right, this one, we don't have to leave it open as long. It's pretty easy. I'll share with you one quick best practice that was uh, shared with me a long time ago, Lee. <clears throat> it was actually from uh, one of the first accounting firms I ever worked with, which was if you have more than two of a client in a particular vertical or profession, then you're a specialist in that particular vertical or profession, right? Because two is better than one and one is better than none. So, you know, for those firms that are looking for how do I start to figure out if I have a specialty or not, that's, uh, that's one way to go about it. Oh, and you can, this is where you can get 100% creative on it, right? And you don't want to get, focus so narrow that there's only 12 people that might be in your audience. Um, but it's definitely, you know, people do this with pets and animals and all. I mean, you could go on and on uh, different ways to do it, but it's definitely a process that's worth, uh, worth, worth spending your time on. I wasn't counting down. I don't know where, how close we are, but. Um. Got about another 20 seconds. Okay. Building on that same subject, if you have those clients and there's multiple of them, be in contact with them constantly because they can help you shape your messaging to then attract more of that particular vertical. Well, get the reviews from them. And if they're all in the same niche, they're going to be saying the same type of talking points. And that's, Again, that goes to the social proof. Let the you know let your clients do the selling for you. It's much more valuable and believable than you know what you're writing in your ad copy. For sure. All right, we'll quickly go through this. Yay! True, ninety six percent. Um, so, all right, uh, referrals, word of mouth referrals. Um, the one thing that I was, I, I wanted to say is referrals have changed, right? It has been disrupted by the internet. And that doesn't mean that um, you're still not getting referrals. That's not what we're speaking to. Again, we're talking about how do you create a machine that can bring you quote unquote referrals in mass versus a slower process of the traditional word of mouth referral. And what we're saying in this presentation is this whole process has been disrupted by the internet because even if you are still getting the traditional referral, they're Googling your name and based on what they see there is whether they decide to engage you or not. Um, and that's kind of what we're talking about, that your digital assets will help play a role in whether or not your referrals convert to clients because these referrals might still be make, you know, being made right now and your, your referral then searches your name and sees a one star review on Yelp and the, you know, they never call you. Um, and I think that's kind of the, the basics here is you, you need to think about. And I know Aaron, you had a, a couple points here as well. Yeah, I, I would just say, and I talked about the recalibration of where ADP is getting their referrals today. <clears throat> we've actually seen a significant shift to our client base, you know, helping to spread the word of mouth referrals, but we've actually had to create incentives in order to do that. Uh, but we've seen an increase of 40% uh, through that base. So again, it's just a matter of like getting creative with, you know, the different ways that you can pull referrals in um, and trying different ways to get word of mouth referrals out to the market. So um, definitely, you know, definitely hit home on this slide. Perfect. This is, this goes into my one star. Um, we wrote a, a, a nice article about if you have negative reviews, what to do. Um, but basically, in the age of reviews, receiving a one-star rating on an online platform, um, you know, it's, it's your worst nightmare, right? But in reality, it actually can make your profile more um, believable. So it's not the end of the world as long as you have a lot of five-star reviews on top of it. So, uh, and there's also ways to engage the reviewer to perhaps work it out that that review might be removed or they might update that review. So we have written an article, uh, again, countyworkspro.com would be a great place to to learn more about that. Um, we've talked about this already. So, you know, one of the thought processes we want to, to leave with you guys is what will they see when they, when someone Googles your name, right? And this is where we want the reviews, testimonials, social proof. Um, these are the things that when they're considering you, you want to be part of that consideration. Um, you know, have these available on your site, have them available on social media, have them available when, you know, even on your email links to your, uh, your review sites. Um, you know, th those are the ways you're going to be able to, to, to step out or stand out. Sorry. Um, all right. So I get to hand over a little bit more to Aaron here to finish this out. 
Um, I will try to make the slides go with you, but um, let's go ahead and get going. And we're, uh, we're closing in here on the end of this. Yeah. I'm going to do my best New York City minute interpretation here. So, um, you know, to close this out here, it's, it's really a matter of taking all the different best practices and suggestions that you heard throughout the course of this presentation that Lee went through and we went back and forth on to really help create that referral pipeline that clearly has been disrupted. One of the things that we've learned here at ADP is that the volume is definitely going to be something that's going to be hard to make up in this, in this you know, experience that we're trying to build out. But the quality that we've seen has started to increase and it's making sure that we're taking some of the, the, the steps and making sure that you have a very well outlined process uh, in order to how you want to go out and drive more market share. So I've mentioned it before, but asking is key. You know, I think previously the old school way is that we've had these relationships and it was just, you know, an expectation that they would bring it up in order to provide the referrals. But we need to be asking more, asking all the time and asking everyone, uh, you know, sharing the reviews that Lee talked about making sure that we're utilizing the multiple mediums of communication through social, through uh, the internet, through uh, email, et cetera, you know, to make sure that we're staying top of mind. That's not easy where information is coming to us at all angles. So you know, how you approach that is going to be critical. Exceeding expectations, you know, this goes back to that experience that you're creating for people. So what are you doing that's different? How are you emphasizing that for your uh, prospective buyers and your, your current clients? Um, Lee mentioned it before, but I think this is super critical to take the offensive when it comes to your prospecting, knowing about them before you engage with them so you can identify uh, what those needs are pri prior to getting on the call with them or at least having an idea of what that might look like. I'm not going to go through all of these because we touched on many of them, but I think the homework prior to engaging today is a lot more important because of, again, the number of at-bats we're going to have um, you know, because the, the volume of referrals going down. So if you move into the next slide, you know, one of the ways that we could do this is by gaining uh, credibility through the media. Um, and I think, again, having the preparation of having that cold pitch, the elevator pitch, you know, for some of us, we're not as comfortable in the sales arena. So just making sure that you have that value proposition outlined, you know, how you're approaching the market, what's different about you. You may need to find some of these media outlets that are going to promote you. Um, so, you know, just being able to go out and search the market for those that are uh, interested in, in absorbing information. Trust me, there's tons of them out there. So don't feel like you have to go too far and wide, uh, but just making sure that your pitch is ready. So that way, when they ask, you are prepared. Um, and then what you're going to find is, as you become a little bit more, um, you know, exposed in the market, when you start to get a, a couple more thought leaders looking at you, uh, you're going to have people that you potentially want to turn away um, because they're looking for you in these cases. So just make sure that you're being selective, that you're not necessarily in every single type of uh, media outlet out there because that might ne necessarily attract the type of buyer that you're looking for. Um, so if we move over to the next slide here, as we have one minute left, and then try to squeeze this in here. Uh, you know, again, this is one way that we are truly trying to focus on, you know, uh, we heard um, one of the uh, state societies tell us that one of the biggest challenges for the accounting community is marketing. It's not necessarily one of their strongest suits uh, for the majority of the, the firms out there. So how can you create customized uh, collateral that you could send out to your existing client base? So you can either expand your current share of wallet or you can start to target, and you talked about it before, Lee, with the CRM tools that you provide, as well as other solutions that ADP can bring to market for you, where you can start to compartmentalize the prospects that you're working on, so you can create customized information, templates, uh, and white-labeled information that you can provide out to the market. Uh, we do a lot of that through County Works Pro today, and uh, can't thank you enough for the partnership, Lee. Uh, and if we move over to the last, last slide, you know, just wanted to make sure that uh, everybody's aware of the, the promotion that we have available between our two organizations. We get 20% off the first three months for any new clients um, and the monthly marketing packages that are provided through Accounting Works. All the setup fees are waived. Um, and you can create your free account today at adp.accountingworkspro.com. And the last sentiment that I have, and I know we might be a little bit short for the Q&A portion, but I wanted to thank Lee, you, and, and County Works, and your entire team. Uh, it's been a tremendous event. Hopefully, people found value in some of the content that we delivered today. And, you know, in uh, four or five minutes, I got through that pretty quick. So I don't know if there's still enough time for us to go through Q&A. Well, Aaron, we do have uh, enough time for some Q&A. So, uh, Alexa, if you can start looking at those questions for us. Before I get uh, going, I know that ADB has their free trial and those links. Uh, we are also at County Works Pro have our own um, marketing automation suite and different price points that if you uh, did not go through the ADP trial and wanted to uh, check out County Works Pro, you can talk to one of our um, 
consultants and or start a free trial at countyworkspro.com. Uh, we are offering uh, people who watch this full webinar a discount of 20% off the first three months. Uh, some restrictions may apply, but use Web20 when placing that order. And before we get into the Q&A, um, I do want to throw out one last polling question. Um, are you interested in learning more about ADP's marketing toolkit or the County Works Pro marketing automation system? Uh, we'll keep this one shorter, but if you could, uh, hopefully we provided enough information today uh, to build some trust and rapport that uh, obviously we, we, we know what we're talking about. We have a successful uh, subscriber base that is, is booming through this uh, transition. So we would love to have more and more pros make this, uh, make it into the digital age. So uh, answer A, yes, please contact me and uh, we'll get in hold of you as soon as we can. Uh, so Alexa, I'll, I'll give a few more seconds here to uh, put question number four through, um, but let's go ahead and queue up a, a few Q&A questions now. Thank you. All right, looks like we have time for about three questions. So I flagged a few that I thought were good questions and we'll answer these right now. And then any other questions, we'll answer in the Q&A box or follow up with you afterwards. So the first question I have for you, Lee, um, is you mentioned social proof. Can you explain what that is and how it works? Sure, I mean, we did go into a little detail here, but one of the things with social proof is it's one of the biggest missing elements of uh, many professionals. It's a reason a lot of websites and even landing pages, any sort of marketing campaigns don't convert. So kind of going over a definition again, social proof is basically backing up what you say about yourself with third party validation. And that's used through reviews, uh, endorsements, mentions online. So, you know, what other people say about you matters, right? So the power of the web, at a client or prospect's fingertips uh, enables them to do a lot of, there's, you know, there's full transparency here, right? So your, on, your online reputation is extremely transparent. They can see exactly what others think of you, exactly what others are saying about you. So um, your audience can find a, a plethora of information about your business before ever even speaking to you. And um, I usually quote a couple of uh, uh, stats from Bright Local. Um, and these are things that are, I think, really important and eye-opening. So 88% of consumers have read reviews to determine the quality of a local business. Now think about that. I mean, you know, obviously it's common sense, anything you buy on Amazon or anything else, you're gonna look at reviews when you're doing the same research. The same thing applies when someone's deciding, you know, which accountant to work with. Uh, and more importantly, 72% of consumers say that positive reviews make them trust a local business more. And not only that, think about it, when they're deciding whom to work with, that it kind of reinforces their decision making. And when they start working with you, if they've got a lot of positive feedback before they just made this decision, the likelihood that they'll feel more comfortable and trust you from the beginning, you know, trust your advice is, is obviously important. So, you know, social proof enables you to use technology to create what I consider human to human connections. So it exists because people group together in society, right? So think of social media. It matters whom others recommend and choose to work with. So, you know, you just you you care what your uh, family members say. You know, perhaps some colleagues or people you look up to, or influencers, for example. That's what social proof is all about. So, the people you surround yourself with um, are always pushing and pulling you to do certain things, right? So, they're basically influencing your behavior and decision making process, and that's pretty much the kind of the core of how social proof works. Uh, in marketing and tax and accounting practice. So I hope that provides a little bit more clarity. Yeah, great. Um, another good question we had is, what exactly is in the ADP marketing library? Sure, we have some free resources. So when you sign up, if you go to the trial link that we uh, provided in the other slide, um, you'll be able to access everything. But basically, you know, ADP is Joint Forces of Accounting Works Pro. Uh, to provide users with a library of pre-approved ADP brochures and video content. Um, so the Categories Pro marketing engine will basically take your contact information, so things like your logo, phone number, et cetera, and will dynamically create a personalized marketing collateral on the fly. So it just takes a few minutes. If it's a uh, PDF brochure, for example, we'll put your logo in certain areas or contact information. If it's any of the video content, we'll actually integrate your branding into the video on the fly, that usually takes a few minutes, uh, but then you can download that file and use it on your website 
um, you know, anywhere basically. Uh, trial users also get uh, access to our uh, County Works Pro library of newsletter articles, our promotional videos. Uh, we have a bunch of different uh, uh, client brochures, occupation brochures. There's a, there's a plethora of information there. So um, it's definitely a great trial to take advantage of. And obviously, the more you communicate the value you're providing to your um, customer base, the, the better. Awesome. And we have time for one more question, and that is, how is teleaccountant different than a Zoom meeting? Um, and that's a good question. So the, the reason we developed teleaccountant was we saw a lot of, I would call, pushback slash uh, friction points in the way uh, professionals were running meetings with their clients. And one of the biggest issues is most uh, of these third-party technology products require their clients to download an app. So they may not have the app available. They may have to update their app. They may have messed up their settings. So we've realized that um, it makes it a little more difficult to get people online in, in a hurry, especially people that aren't used to meeting all the time. So Teleaccountant basically is a browser-based tool. So all you need is a, a, a web device, right? A web-enabled device, a browser of some sort, and they just click on the link and the video loads. So there's no downloading of, uh, of applications. There's no technology uh, delays and getting clients up and running to their appointments. So it's a, it's a huge issue. And uh, more importantly, we also integrate, you know, these are standalone, Zoom is a standalone product. You know, we're integrating document sharing, ID check, uh, appointment calendars, all these different tools into your meeting environment. So it's, you know, it's one solution solves all your problems. Uh, and the other issue we found is bigger firms having multiple site licenses for multiple technologies and actually knocking each other out when you know people are trying to use it simultaneously. So we've helped uh, with our teleaccountant solution, we've really resolved all of those uh, pain points and made it you know, a very cost effective uh, tool. So what's great about that as well, we talked about this earlier, you can go to countyworkspro.com and set up a free trial and actually run your own meetings, uh, being able to see it in action and, and, and kind of take, a, take it for a test ride. So, um, I hope that answers, you know, that I, I do appreciate everyone spending time with us today. I hope you'll find a lot of this information, uh, things that you, you know, points that you can take and put into your practice today. The digital um, uh, workflows and processes and, and necessities to run your business are not going away. And in some respects, you know, if you utilize a lot of what we've taught today, um, you know, we think you're going to be more profitable. You'll probably save a lot of time. And, you know, really opens you up to new markets that you may not have seen before. So, again, we appreciate you spending the time with us. Feel free to reach out to either ADP or County Works Pro, um, you know, with any questions. I'm available on LinkedIn as well. So, again, thank you for spending some time with us.